It's the next morning from the uh, previous shots that you saw where I was actually working on the crosshead and getting the bores in there. I'm expecting the bushings to be in here today so that we can get those pressed in and I'm working on the last stop where we have to uh, drill this side and then uh, tap that side right there. So we're getting that set up. I'll show you that here in just a minute. I wanna start by getting my coffee going though. Get that going. All right, so our setup for the cross rail, what I've done is obviously move the angle plate around like that. We clamped in here using these holes that I drilled. We got a stud top and bottom there. I'm sorry if the sunlight's blowing you out. I got a window here that helps bring in fresh sunlight. And on this face here, I've used this uh, stare at back plunge indicator and I have run it up and down and what we did was we just bumped this around until this was nice and square so we're square with our face that way our cross hole will be nice and square to everything and i'll show you once we get ready i gotta get some of my coffee down i took this piece of stock this is just a piece of i think it was like 400 grade stainless I turned it on this side to fit in that bore and we're gonna stick this in there it's a really close fit so I'll have to wedge that a little bit and get this in there and then what we can do is actually indicate off this to find the center or find the edge whatever you know do our math and then offset it to the proper distance right there you know so got to get lined up where that needs to be this will be pretty much our last machining op here is drilling, tapping, and then we've got to do our bushings. I'll have to face the bushings in the lathe before I press them in there. All right, so we'll get started on this in just a minute. I'm gonna have a few sips of my coffee and enjoy the nice, cool, crisp morning here in Florida. We've got our coffee ready and I am ready to go. This is a um, this is an awesome tool bit that I just got off of eBay. Surprisingly enough, one of the uh, fellows that watches my videos, <laughs> he recognized me whenever I bought it. But this is an Armstrong T6S, and it holds a three quarter inch wide tool bit. I've got a there's a three quarter three quarter inch tool bit right there. That is cool. So I got this for the shaper right here. I'm gonna have to take a 16th off of, we'll do it off this side right there so that it will fit in the lantern. It's uh, it's about 75 thousandths too wide right now. I thought that was cool. That showed up yesterday. So I just had it sitting here. I'm gonna clean it up, make it look pretty. Just thought I'd show you that since we were walking by. All right, we'll get started back on the part here in just a minute. I'm just going over some dimensions for the last machining op that we got to do, which is actually the uh, the drilled and counterboard hole here and then the tapped hole on the other side. The uh, the tapped hole is not the issue, but I am I'm I had uh, sent a message to Eric. I'm trying to get him to uh, verify some of this stuff before I just assume what we need to do. It says uh, U.S. standard tap which is gonna be a size uh, seven eighths, but it doesn't, it doesn't tell me if it's coarse or fine thread. So I don't know, I, I want it to him to, um, I want him to let me know what size bolt he's got. I mean, if he's got the actual bolt there or if he's just gonna use a bolt, if he's gonna purchase one, I'm not really sure. So I need to verify the thread pitch. So it'll be drilled from this side. This is, this is the side that it's, you're going in from. Uh, you'll have clearance through this side right here. This is the side that'll be tapped. So I've actually got it marked so I know which one, you know, which way to set it up. So this will be the tap side. The other problem that I'm dealing with right now is that I'm looking at the dimensions here for P, which actually indicates the depth of the counter bore on this side right there. And it's saying P is 
it was one inch yeah one inch which is going to be from the edge of the uh, the saw cut to the depth of the counterboard there well this ear is actually one inch right there so I'm not I'm not sure what what's going on and what's changed I'm not understanding it because we machined the thickness of this to the print which was uh, two and three sixteenths wide right there so you can see the uh, picture of the counterboard there and you can also see it in this section right there so I'm really just waiting for Eric to uh, verify what he wants me to do with this because you could be just where all you need to do is just put a bolt in there you know it's a nice um, you know seven eighths diameter uh, socket head bolt and just pull right up on that put it put a washer underneath it maybe I don't know so I'm just gonna wait to uh, hear from him on what we're gonna do but I'm gonna go ahead and start setting it up though at least get it set up in the uh, the mill and get it ready to go probably just pull it up with uh, on an angle plate on this side right there that way I can uh, find the center this way and then offset it to the uh, center point of where the holes got to be We'll go ahead and get our uh, bar in there. I'm just going to use this wedge and just ever so lightly just spread it. I do have a jack underneath there too to kind of help support the uh, downward pressure that we'll be putting on this piece here. Get it started straight. close fit on that so we'll use our edge finder and find the center here make it simple we'll just go ahead and take it to the middle half y so there's our zero location anyway I don't have to go all the way to zero but now we'll know uh, we're in the middle of the bore and we'll step it over this way I want to find the edge of the uh, the part first though we do have a distance to follow there Okay. Quarter. We've properly located the hole position in both our uh, X and Y axis there. And uh, what I was going to point out to you, I've been discussing this hole with Eric. And the print calls for a counterbore on this side right there. But the, uh, the dimensions of the counterbore isn't making any sense. It's just not adding up. And I spoke with Eric about what, does he have the bolt that goes in that so that we could confirm dimensions or is he using his own bolt, you know? So he said that he's actually just gonna get a bolt for it. And so what we decided to do is just drill this side and tap that side. We're gonna go with the recommended threads, which is uh, seven eighths uh, fine pitch. So seven eighths 14 is what this will be tapped to. And then he is going, going to worry about getting a proper bolt for that. He says he might even try to find a square headed bolt for that. And what he'll do is just put a washer, you know, between the head of the bolt and this face right there. So we're not going to worry about a counter bore on this side. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. It would help if I tighten the drill chuck up first. We'll get a pilot down through there and then we'll uh, tap or drill it to our tap size.
We're going to go with a uh, 51 64 drill. Let me see, there's my calipers. I want to verify that. It's always good to verify it because I have gra grabbed the wrong drill thinking that it was one and uh, ended up being a different drill and drilling it oversized. So the, uh, the tap charts will tell you on one chart, it'll tell you use a 59 60 or I'm sorry, 51 64 and the next one's going to tell you 13 sixteenths. It really depends on what the uh, percentage of thread that you're really looking for. I'm going to go ahead and go with the smaller of the drills because we're, we're tapping cast iron anyway, which is easy to tap. So they give us a little bit more thread percentage there, which I think would be good for a part like this. one of our 7 8 14 tap sets here there it is back there there's our 7 8 there's our 7 8 9 7 8 14 right here nice classic union tool set right there three quarter 16 all right all right we got our our tap size right there drilled in this one but we need to drill this side over here uh, we're going to drill it 57 64 so that'll put it one nominal size over 7 8 that'll provide clearance for the 7 8 bolt when it's sliding through there and tightening it up it'll also provide enough clearance for the tap itself to get down through there so we can do our tapping There we go. I just felt it break through the uh, top half there. Got just enough clearance with that uh, saw cut there that it doesn't go down and start trying to drill the, the bottom side. You can see that gives us good clearance for our tap there. Go ahead and get our chamfer cut on there. Whenever I'm tapping cast iron, I do like to use a little bit of lubricant. I use this anchor lube, and I find that it has helped me tremendously whenever I'm tapping cast. It does lubricate the cast, it lubricates the tap, and it prevents any kind of galling. I've had problems where I have cast, uh, or I've tapped cast before, and it was like ripping the threads out of it, especially pipe thread. That's the big deal for me was uh, pipe thread. So, I started using this anchor lube here on uh, on cast, and it it eliminated that problem that I was having there. So just use a little bit; it'll help lubricate the the cutting action there. We're not going to be able to go very far with a tap wrench here because of the angle plate and the uh, height of the workpiece. I'm just going to clamp up high on it right there, so we can get it at least get it started. I'm use a spring loaded center. Ah. See that right there? I just smashed my finger. Corner of that angle plate right there. I was just going to use this to get it started, get it going straight. There we go. All right. 
go ahead and take this off and then what we'll use I'll just use my alligator wrench now to uh, finish tapping it just keep the uh, end of the tap supported with a spring-loaded center or even a solid center holding down on the on the quill there these uh, these alligator wrenches work great for turning a tap like this and I try to support it so that I'm not just over here pulling because you you twist it you pull it to the side and you start rubbing the top of the threads out there so I hold it in a manner where I'm not really trying to pull it to the side, but yet I'm also turning it at the same time there. If anybody's wondering why we wouldn't use the flex arm for a job like this, because it would be awesome to use that but the problem is, is the setup here. This is such a, you know, one-off piece. This is not something that you can just easily go to the vise and clamp in there and be straight, you know. So, best thing to do is just go ahead and machine it. Tap it right here in the machine in one setup. All right, we are uh, making it through the bottom there. Okay. Make sure that we get all the way through. We got a piece of 4140 chucked up here in the Monarch, and what I'm going to do is machine a custom size washer to go with this crosshead for the uh, for the Fairbanks power hammer. And I'm gonna, I went ahead and ordered a bolt just so that I know that I at least got a bolt that's going to work with this unit but I want to have a washer underneath it. But the washers, the commercially available washers, actually too big on the OD. It would uh, run into the radius on the casting that I machined. So I'm just going to machine a uh, washer that fits the, the head of a uh, cap head bolt because that's what we're going to go with. We ain't gotta worry about no flood coolant for one little part like this. Just gonna use some of our cutting oil. There's our washer right there. I'm gonna throw it in the oven for about an hour and let it uh, do a little heat treat. 
we can uh, get it a little harder than what it is. There's our heat treated washer. What I'll do is uh, clean the scale off of it, clean it up some, and then uh, we'll put it back in there and uh, temper it at 500 degrees. We got the washer cleaned up and I lapped both sides and just do an initial test here. It looks like we're around 47, 47 to 48 Rockwell. That's what it looks like. I just lapped it over on my lapping plate to clean it up. So we'll, uh, I'm still waiting on the oven to cool down and then we'll do it a, we'll do a temper on it. <laughs> 